Hello, I'm History Big Sis. In last lecture, we dealt with two of the five people who died horribly in ways unique to the Warring States period. Today, I will talk about the remaining three. Warlord Crucified Upside Down The fierce struggle between the Oda and Takeda clans was fought in the eastern Mino area, which is now the eastern part of Gifu Prefecture. For Takeda Shingen, it was an area that he had to hold in order to keep Oda Nobunaga in check. October 1572, the third year of the Genki era. Takeda Shingen finally started his campaign to the west and marched to the Tokugawa's territory in Tokwu Tokumi. In addition, in order to check the movement of the Oda clan, Takeda's general, Akiyama Torashige, led an invasion into the East Mino area. Iwamura Castle, a strategic point in East Mino, was soon besieged. The lord of the castle had died a few months before, and the woman who kept the castle was his widow called Atsuya no Kata. She was Nobunaga's aunt and adopted Nobunaga's fifth son. Iwamura Castle was besieged by a large force and had to be opened. Atsuya no Kata also fell into Torashi Gei's hands. She should have been killed, but Torashi Gei allowed her to stay at Iwamura Castle on the condition that she would become his wife. Oda Nobunaga's fifth son was sent to Kofu. Thus, Torashi Gei became the lord of Iwamura Castle. However, the situation surrounding the Takeda clan changed with the death of Takeda Shingen. In 1575, the Takeda clan suffered a crushing defeat at the Battle of Nagashino, and the Oda horde finally attacked Iwamura Castle. Katsuyori, the successor of Takeda Shingen, sent reinforcements, but they could not reach the castle in time. Iwamura Castle was opened, and Torashige and Atsuya no Kata surrendered on the condition that they spare their lives. However, this was only a means to force the castle to fall. When they left the castle, they were captured and the remaining castle soldiers were all slaughtered. They learned that they had been tricked by Oda, but it was too late. They were taken away and executed on the banks of the Nagara River. It is said that they were crucified upside down, which was brutal. The suffering experienced was considerable as they were left to die with their heads down. Blood from the body pooled in their heads, but they were pierced in the temples so that they would not die easily. It is said that Atsuya no Kata died leaving behind strong words of resentment against Nobunaga. A man crucified despite being a samurai. In the third year of Tensho, 1575, Akechi Mitsuhide, a vassal of Oda, attacked Tamba. Hatano Hideharu of Yagami Castle initially sided with him. However, he eventually conspired with Akai na Omasa of Kuroi Castle and disobeyed Mitsuhide. Caught by surprise, Mitsuhide retreated and regrouped his forces to attack Tamba again two years later. In the sixth year of the Tensho era, 1578, the Akechi forces surrounded Yakami Castle with a large force and set up a base around it. They laid siege to the castle for a long period of time. Soon supply routes were cut off, and the Yagami castle suffered from starvation. Akai Naomasa had already died, and there was no one to support Yakami castle anymore. Hideharu intended to continue to hold the castle until the end, but his vassals were not happy to go along with him. Finally, the vassals caused an internal conflict, and the castle was thrown into chaos. And it was the surrender faction that finally took the initiative. Hideharu and his brother Hidetaka were captured and brought to Mitsuhide. In short, Hideharu and his men were betrayed by the starving vassals. On the other hand, there is another theory that Hideharu left the castle on the condition that his vassals would be spared. Hideharu was taken to Azuchi and killed by crucifixion. Conventionally, an enemy general who surrendered would be allowed to commit seppuku with honor. Hideharu, however, died in disgrace as if he were a criminal. The monk who was burned to death. It was not only the samurai who incurred the wrath of the Oda clan. Erinji Temple is famous as the family temple of the Kai Takeda clan. The existing structure was rebuilt by Tokugawa Ieyasu. 
The temple was once the scene of a tragedy when it burned down during the fall of the Takeda clan. In 1564, the seventh year of Eiroku, a high priest named Kai Senjoki was invited to Erinji Temple by Takeda Shingen. He was given the title of national teacher by the imperial court, and was a trusted advisor to Shingen on diplomatic and political matters. When Shingen died, Kai Sen served as the officiating monk at his funeral, and later became an advisor to Shingen's successor Katsuyori. In a sense, he was the spiritual pillar of the Takeda clan. In March 1582, in the tenth year of Tensho, 1582, the Oda and Tokugawa forces began their conquest of Koshu, and Katsuyori committed suicide at Tenmokuzen. The Kai Takeda clan was destroyed. But there was also a crisis looming at Erinji Temple. Rakaku Yoshisada, who had once been an enemy of Nobunaga, had fled to Kai, and with the fall of the Takeda clan, he was hidden in Erinji Temple. Oda Nobutada, the general in command, requested Erinji to hand over Yoshisada. However, Kaizen had no intention of handing over Yoshisada, because the temple was a sanctuary. While Oda and Kai Sen continued dispute, Kai Sen let Yoshisada go. But Nobutada was furious when he heard the news. It is unforgivable to let a renegade escape. Burn that temple. Soon, Kai Sen, along with 150 other monks, was trapped in the temple gate building and burned to death by the fire set by Oda's soldiers. Even the fire is cool if you erase the mind. This famous phrase is said to have been chanted by Kai Sen as he was burned to death. Rakaku Yoshisada, who was able to escape thanks to Kai Sen, survived and served under Tayotomi Hideyoshi, who later unified Japan. So, today, I talked about the remaining three of five people who died horribly in ways unique to the Warring States period. The five people introduced in this video lived in a harsh environment. To survive, they followed their beliefs, sometimes throwing themselves into battle. But their end was tragic. The hardships and sacrifices they suffered are immeasurable. By studying these past events, we can show our appreciation and respect for the times in which they lived. The reasons they fought and what they believed may change with the times, but the courage and beliefs they left behind can serve as a reference in our lives. If you have any thoughts, please let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more. Please hit the like button. See you soon.